Hey, kia ora. Helen Bromsey coming to you live from Sun City in Arizona. Hope you're having a super fantastic, sparkling, magical Monday. Oh, today has been an awesome day. Um, I got to... Um, I got some work done today. Um, I was work, I had a client who wasn't closed today, but had some work for me. So I got that list done. Uh, and then the rest of the day was just a pondering type of day. You know, one where you sit there and you think and you ponder. And um, because of my manifesting challenge this morning, I've got this big urge to get my story written. Um, so that, that's Zephy having her, but if you're hearing any squeaking, she has her squeaky toy. Um, so I had this, um, during my manifestation this morning, I got the message that I need to get nine years, eight months and three days written. Like it is blocking everything else until it is done. So I'm so, so I was like, oh, okay, I know I have some chapters to rework because I had actually written the book before Brad's cancer came back. So while he was in remission and I kept putting off and putting off. Um, um, writing it, um, publishing it. It was actually written and we actually had the cover being designed and everything else and it was called something else. It was called Today is Always Super Fantastic and Sparkling, a Caregiver's Journey Through Her Husband's Battle with Cancer. That was the official title. Uh, but we put off publishing it and I couldn't figure out why. And then finally in October 2014, I broke down and said to Brad, I said, look, can you just read through this thing and give me your opinion? I said, well, I've got to get it off my plate. Can you read through it and give me your opinion? And I said, and um, so then I got him to do that. And then, unbeknown to me, <laughs> unbeknown to me, he went and wrote, he, he says, oh, he says, he says, well, do you want me to write anything for us? I says, yeah, no, not really. Uh, if, you know, if you feel inclined to write something, if you don't, it doesn't matter. And he didn't tell me that he actually had. Because I never read it. If he did, I never read it. Um, so that was in October 2014, just before we found out his cancer was back. And he said, yeah, it's good. He says, you know, let's get it all, you know, looking to get it published and everything else. And then um, a couple of weeks after he read that, uh, he, um, we found out his cancer was back. And so then we had to, and so then I put it off because I'm sort of like, well, do I write this? And then do a part two with today is still super fantastic and sparkling you know the, the journey continues or something like that and so it kind of got put on the back burner then last night I was um, looking for something I was looking for a particular photograph in, um, in my drop box, drop box and I couldn't remember where I had put in it and I came across this folder that said Brad's writing and I'm like well what the heck's in here and I came across this piece that was called a view from the other side and I got chills a view from the other side and I got chills and I read and I opened it up like what the heck is this I have no idea what it was and I opened it up and started reading and Brad had gone and written a last chapter for my book called a view from the other side and I can tell by the when he was writing it it was just after we found out the cancer got had come back so it was November 2014 when he wrote that piece he wrote just over three pages and I'm like looking at this and of course with Brad, my editing eye is on, um, but I read it and it gave me chills. And uh, then this morning during the meditation for, for the manifesting challenge, it came through very clear and very strong that I was to finish this book and it is blocking everything else until I get this thing written. And I'm like, okay, I had on my birthday resolutions that I was going to finish this book this year. So I better get working on it. Um, there's other things that I had written down in my resolutions as well that are starting to appear during the manifestation, but it's, it feels like there's a blockage somewhere. And I got the message that came through today is that this book is blocking everything. So yes, I will start making some steps, excuse me, towards the other resolutions, but until I get rid of the book, until I get the book done, oh, excuse me, until I get the book done, nothing else is going to, you know, the, there'll be minimal movement on it but I've got to get the book done to unblock the rest of the road so everything will come flooding in that needs to get finished. So I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So it was just really chilling that there was this chapter that, and I'm going to leave it caught and I'm going to call it a view from the other side. It's going to be the last chapter in the book and there's going to be a, 
um, a page before it that goes, what follows is Brad's own words. They are unedited. He wrote this in November 2014. Um, and uh, so, you know, please enjoy his words on the, on the, on the journey. And I have some, and then there was some other stuff that um, like he had started writing. Um, it actually started writing a book and there's some chapters that he has written. And so I'm looking at those thinking, maybe I'll include those in the end of the book too. And it'll be like um, a bonus section at the end of the book will be what follows as Brad's own words and his own writing. They're completely unedited for a reason. Um, because I would go in there, change things around and all that, and it wouldn't be his words and his thoughts. I said, so So it'd be like, excuse the spelling errors, excuse, excuse the grammar errors, everything. It is it is raw as he wrote it. I didn't want to touch it because um, I wanted his words and his voice. So um, that was kind of a cool find, and then today to get that urging to go and write. So today's been pondering about um, what changes I need to make in the book. I haven't opened the manuscript for the book um, yet. Um, I'm just thinking about how I want it to flow because I want it to go different to what I did have it starting as because I had it in different topics um, throughout the book, although I may keep it that way. <laughs> I don't know. This is where I was just pondering as to how do I want the chapters to flow? Do I just want it to be chronological order? Do I want it to talk about specific things um, with specific stories and our feelings during that time. Um, you know, just sort of like, how do I want it structured? And um, I know it's going, to be, it's going to get very real and very raw with emotions and stuff as I start writing this book, which was one reason I have put it off so long. Um, even though Brad's been gone over four years, it's still, it's still raw and it still hurts. And so bringing up... Um, that manuscript, I mean, I'm sitting there and there's during the meditation and there's just tears just pouring down my face. And then we had to do, um, and then part of the meditation was that she then said, okay, I want you now to pick up your pen and your journal and just start writing. She says, don't even edit what's being written, just let the pen flow. I couldn't even see what was being written on the page. There were, there were my eyes, I was just, my eyes were just pouring with tears. I couldn't see what was written. Um, went back, it was horrible handwriting. <laughs> Some of it I couldn't even decipher. I had to, I had to decipher my own handwriting. <laughs> but um, you know, when you're in that frame of, when you're in that place, um, you know, strange things come out, and it was, and it was all about getting the story told. You know, how I keep telling other people, you got to tell your story, you got to tell your story. Yet, um, I have got a mental block on telling that portion of my story. So um, yesterday was pondering and thinking about it, and um, and. Uh, just some reflection on that, um, trying to figure out which way I want to go with the book. Do I just want to go chronological order? Do I just want to pick a topic and write about that topic and have each chapter as a different topic in the journey? Um, so that's kind of where I am right now with that. So we'll see what happens. So today was just pondering that. So I got the work done that I needed to get done for the client who didn't shut down today, uh, which is fine because I just it gave me time to get the stuff done because there was stuff that she wanted done today. And so I got the stuff done today that needed to get done. And then I got the other stuff done as well. Um, so it's, um, yeah, and then I spent the day, the afternoon pondering. And all of a sudden I look up and it's five o'clock. And it's sort of like, and Ziffy comes bouncing out of the bedroom and looks at me as I say, well, we're going to go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, we'll go for a walk. So we just got back from a really nice walk. It's still a little stuff. We've had the windows open here in the RV today. And it got up to 70 degrees for the high. And inside the RV, it got up to like 77, um, just because of the sun pouring in and uh, heating everything up inside. Even though we had all the windows open, there was a two mile per hour wind out of the north, which hits the back of the RV, so doesn't really stir up any air, doesn't even flutter the awning or anything like that. So um, yeah, we're just going to, we got the windows still partly open in a couple of places, um, and we'll just let the the cooler air starts circulating in with the fans that I have going in the RV. I have two fans that go consistently in the RV, except when I'm driving. It's the only time they're off is when we're traveling. But otherwise, these fans are on 24-7. Um, I have a circular fan on, what can I say? But we have one up on the dashboard that circulates the air up the front there and then one in the bedroom. Can't do ceiling fans, so we just got to do little portable ones that plug in and, uh, and an energy saver one. So anyway... 
I gotta go. So have a super fantastic sparkling day. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I might actually go sit down and put my feet up and watch a movie or two. I haven't done that in a while. Like all last week, it was homework. It was homework stuff that got done. And this week, it's sort of like, oh, I, can, I actually have free time in my evenings where I can now go and sit down and put my feet up and watch a movie or a TV show or something. See what Prime's got going on. So, that'll be fun. Oh, are you a Lee Childs fan? And do you have Prime? Because February 4th, they're starting a TV series called Reacher. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait for that to start. February 4th, Reacher is on Amazon Prime. So, I can't wait to, to see that. I love those um, Jack Reacher books. But anyway, I'm out of here. Have a super fantastic sparkling weekend. Um, go and enjoy your day. Um, I've had a friend who it's his 50th birthday today. So happy birthday, Casey. Hope everything's going well and that you've had a super fantastic sparkling day. And of course, it was Betty White's 100th birthday today, had she still been alive. So everybody's been celebrating that. And uh, apparently, if you go and Google Betty White um, and start scrolling, all the stuff starts happening on the screen and everything, which is kind of cool. So um, have a super fantastic sparkling day. And we'll catch you guys back here bright and early tomorrow morning for... Tremendous Tuesday, Terrific Tuesday, Tune Up Tuesday. It'll be some T word to go with Tuesday. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Have a super fantastic sparkling evening. Hey, Konera.